corner where the trees is is this the the passing of the torch right is this what this signifies it comes down to that that front office and what they feel is most important the champ is here we've touched down from a higher plane why you made it here we always look forward to that week because it was always intense you know that we ain't coming back we got to the man the myth the legend dante hall my 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 favorite player growing up was dante hall i love you guys <laughs> show, but dante was my guy get the dash because you're still on the war feet This episode of Chief Concerns is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Hey there, Marcus Dash here from Chief Concerns. Just want to comment and say BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for football, baseball, boxing, golf, and much more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Hey everybody, welcome to another show, another breaking news show on Chief Concerns. I'm Marcus Dash here with my brother, Tasia Dash. Uh, JD, I don't know if he's going to be coming on. It's late. Uh, so I, I don't know. I sent him the information so that we have a group message that we've been texting in all day, but I don't know if he's going to be coming on. However, we wanted to come on and talk Hollywood Brown. Uh, you know, uh, three days ago, I, quite frankly, all throughout the off season, all throughout even last year, I was even talking about free agents going into the year. I always mention Hollywood Brown because I've secretly been a huge Hollywood Brown. Not secretly. I've been a huge Hollywood Brown fan for a long time. And I thought, I mean, I remember when 2019 draft, there was we were interested in Hollywood Brown. We there was chances of us, uh, talks of us even moving up to go get him. We didn't, but like we there was there was a huge interest there. Brett Veach, our scouting department, was all at his pro day, and they were huge fans of Hollywood Brown, and it makes sense. And here we are in 2024, Hollywood Brown. Uh, this week, three days ago, likes our post. We tweet at him saying, "Hey, come to Kansas City, let's get this done," and we do the handshake emoji. And what happens? Three days later, he liked it. Three days later, he's signing a deal. And I was at basketball. I was playing basketball tonight. I get a text uh, from Tasia. Hey, dude, Hollywood Brown signed. I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, we got to do live stream. So here we are, Hollywood Brown. And you know what? I think we we all got to thank Andy Reid for recruiting skills. Uh, Hollywood, think red today. Casey red with diamonds, Andy Reid. And then, of course, Hollywood Brown's text back to him. Yes, sir. Love the sound of that. Heart and a ring. Think Hollywood Brown, lights, camera, action, two rocket signs. I mean, <laughs> I'm thinking that and then some. Okay. I, I love I love the deal too. One year, seven million worth up to eleven million. I mean, that's that's incredible. The, the guy's essentially betting on himself. I mean, everyone's talking about his injury concerns. This whole week we've had people going back and forth, like, oh, I want Curtis Samuel, I want uh, Mike Williams, uh Hollywood Brown's too small, he's gonna get injured. Everybody has the, all these guys we're talking about, they all have their own concerns and so in some way, they all have their own chief concerns. Hollywood Brown, man, and I, I've seen that Hollywood Brown was on um was on his Twitch tonight uh, talking about uh, uh, doing the swag surfing. I mean, he's ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm just lo- loving this. I- I'm loving this. I don't know what happened with Tage's, uh, Tage's stuff here. Um, Tage, you there? No? Okay. No, no Tage right now. Um, but I want to hear from you guys. I-, I-, I know that this week and today we had the whole live stream and stuff we talked about, you know, possibly bringing in Mike Williams, Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel ends up going to Buffalo. Uh, Tyler Boyd was a possible potential. That didn't happen. And Hollywood Brown, man, I'm. I think that seeing him kind of be this guy that we don't have in this room. I know. I think Mark Bo worked went on Twitter yesterday. Said we have, we have a cheaper um, Hollywood Brown and Michael Harbin. And it's like, no, not really, no, not at all. And what Hollywood Brown has, has shown throughout his career is this kind of this ability to be that 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 deep ball guy and a little bit of everything. And I yesterday I had posted his Oklahoma highlights stage. I don't know what happened. Um, I posted his uh, Oklahoma highlights, and I got flack for it. So, like, oh, what? that was six years ago. Well, you know what? No, because uh, yes, it was six years ago. But I will say this: I posted that for one reason, one reason only. And and seeing Andy Reid tweet or text Hollywood Brown and showing that he wants him that badly, that told me one thing. And this is one thing that I went on yesterday when I was t- when I shared his Oklahoma highlights. There's stuff that Hollywood Brown can do. He's not just a deep ball guy. He showed in college in that Lincoln Riley offense and that West Coast or that air raid esque offense. 
He showed that he could do it all. He showed he could be a quick screen guy. He showed he can, you know, uh, run rub routes. He showed he could do it all. Jet jet sweeps. He could do everything. And then on top of that, his elite ability to stretch the defenses. And and I said Lincoln Riley was great, and, and he went to Baltimore. He had 1,000 yards in that li- very limited Greg Roman Ravens offense. And he comes out, uh, and he th- does 1,000 yards. Didn't really, you know, they trade him to Arizona. Arizona, I mean, like, he had half a season with Ky- Kyler Murray. And then on top of that, this past year, everyone's like, oh, well, look at his stats that he had this year. What do you expect him to do with Josh Dobbs and Clayton Thune? I mean, like, I mean, and then also he had Colt McCoy at the end of his first year in Arizona. So, like, very limited. So that was I, one of the better quarterbacks you have besides Kyler Murray. I know. You know, and, 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 what I'm, and my thing is you have Andy Reid who, who has taken air raid. I mean, look at think about this. What he did with Mahomes, he took a lot of what air, the air raid stuff and the elements they had in that offense and kind of combined it and had a hybrid with his, with his West Coast offense. If he can do that with, te- with Patrick Mahomes and the, 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 and the quarterback, imagine what he can do stylistically, schematically with Hollywood Brown. And I'm just so excited about this. I mean, you have Rasheed Rice, you have Travis Kelsey, and then you have Hollywood Brown taking the defense uh, over the top. And I, I, I honestly, this guy is going to be uh, a guy I'm going to be circling on my uh, fa- fantasy uh, board this year. I, I, I've always been a big Hollywood Brown fan, but now you got Mahomes throwing bombs. Guys, we can actually see Mahomes throw bombs again, not just uh, once in a while to MVS. We're gonna see the bomb, the shot again, every game with Hollywood Brown. I'm so, I'm so elated. I'm so happy, Tasha. Sorry, I, I kind of had a little monologue there. Kind of went off and spouted off here. I'm so excited. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? I'm seeing everyone here is ecstatic about this. Um, You're not as excited as Hollywood Brown is because he's uh, live streaming, swag surfing, and just like you know, ear to ear smiles. It's so awesome, like. Maybe I'm not paying attention to it because I'm not a fan of these teams, but I just don't get when you guys sign with the Chiefs, man. They they live stream their reactions because it matters. You know, like you're to 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 know you're gonna move the needle on like a team that everyone watches at the end of the year because they're they're gonna be in the AFC championship at worst or the championship game. It's gotta be special for players, man. It, it's the kind of feeling that Drew Tranquil talked about when he said he experienced this year and how fun football was again, because it mattered. It's not just a job. I mean, sure. It's just a job for a lot of these guys, but respect to Brown because it's obviously not just a job. And yes, it could benefit him too. If he has a good year, he could be looking at a Calvin Ridley type contract next year. Sure. That's the upside for him pocket wise. Right. But he didn't have to take a year with Kansas city to do that. He probably could have taken a couple, a couple more million, do it with another team, uh, a, a not as good team who won't be as competitive and football won't be as fun. And, and you know, I, I know you're saying, you know, people say, well, yeah, but he's getting the ball from Patrick Mahomes. But we got a lot of guys, right? So it's not like he's going to get like 130 Tyree kill targets. He's not. Like he's he's going to be competing with Rice, Kelsey, whoever we draft probably in the first two rounds. We'll get to that, I'm sure. Um, so it's like you'll be in competition with, with, with receptions and targets. Um but he did it, and I respect it because he took a little less to play competitive football for probably like 20 weeks of the season um, with the highest stakes, and he wants to be in those games. He wants to be catching balls from Mahomes, and I just love seeing that reaction from players. They're just so happy to be there. It's just so different than everywhere else. Um, you know, like you're not calling your, your buddy to tell him you signed with Carolina. You know what I mean? Your buddies are texting you. They heard the news that you're signing with the Carolina. You're calling your buddies to be like, "Yo, dude, I'm playing with. I'm gonna play with Mahomes." You know what I mean? Like that. That's like that's like news breaking. And, and for a lot of these guys, they're already professionals making tons of money to play football. There's not a lot of like move needle moving things out there after a while, right? Playing with the Chiefs, being recruited by Andy Reid, playing with Mahomes. It's one of the few needle moving things you can do in the NFL now as like a free agent, other than just getting some crazy contract you didn't think would happen. But other than that, like, you know, you're not usually not bragging to people around you when you're taking under market value for what you're supposed to be getting. Like Hollywood Brown, compared to like all the comps, he's if you just go by the seven million, but if you go by the eleven million, which is Hey, I hope he makes eleven million because you know what? You know when those incentives are probably AFC Championship, Super Bowl, a uh, thousand yards, 
uh, seven touchdowns. Like, I hope he gets. I hope he gets every friggin' penny. Like the year Juju got all those incentive bonuses. Awesome, dude. Get every incentive bonus you can. Like, I don't. I'm never gonna root against a player making more if it means he plays better and, and is more effective. But like, it's just it's so cool just to see a guy get. Less than what he's worth and him being ecstatic about it, right? It's not that he didn't have a choice. He chose to do it for the right reasons, uh, for winning comp- competition and for his future. Because, I mean, if he has a great year, it benefits us. It'll benefit him. And you know what? I know everyone assumes it'll just be a one-year deal if he tears it up and it will be priced out of it. I don't agree with that because Drew tore it up this year. And Drew was an integral part of our defense. And he signed a multi-year deal with a number he was comfortable with under market value to be able to keep having the fun he had this year. Cause you know, as long as Reed Feach and Mahomes are at the helm, it'll just keep being fun. Yeah. I mean, I'm just so excited. Cause it's like since, since Tyreek Hill, and yeah, we had Tyreek Hill and that. And I think it was, when in 2019, correct me if I'm wrong, the 2019 draft when he was drafted was that the same was that the same draft where there was all that stuff about Tyree came out, and then and then they tra- and then they drafted McCall Harmon in the second round that year was that the 2019 year? I could I'm be pretty sure. We, I, I know we met with him that year. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we, we, we did. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I just I'm just so elated because we finally have a guy like yes, Rasheed Rice was great this year. It was amazing. Uh, but I mean, it was a, it was a rookie, and we kind of took a chance, and then we, you know, we struck out with the t- sky more, and it never really panned out. So like it was it was a chance that we took, and then we have and we bring in, uh, and then we got we signed MVS when when uh, when Tyreek was gone, we signed Ju- Juju. Juju worked out. That was a one year uh, fill in, and my thing is I I think and obviously he went and, and went to New England, got the bag, and got his money, but he's also an older guy too. Um, when when that happened, like with twenty, was he around twenty eight? Because I mean, Hollywood's twenty six right now, so this is a young, this is a young guy. So like, this yeah. one was over. I mean, it's not it's not necessarily to say, oh yeah, he's going to be gone uh, the following season. And quite frankly, I, I think what, what Drew Trankel, what he did this year, kind of op- maybe opened up the eyes. You know, obviously linebacker money versus receiver 100%. money, it's a little different. But I think it may open up the eyes to a lot of these guys. Like, look, like I'm happy here as long as I'm like you know getting paid good money. I'm probably going to stay. So. We'll see. Obviously, we got to see what happens this year. But, man, and let me ask you this. So, now, this is one of the things everyone was talking about when we got a receiver, which everyone knew was going to happen, a veteran receiver. I know some people were saying, oh, we're going to draft rookies. We're not going veteran receiver. No, I, I knew we were going to go veteran receiver. I think most most people who know it follows the team well knew we were going to do this. So, we get Hollywood Brown. And I know we're still going to draft a rookie receiver in the top two rounds because we we lost Hardman. We lost MVS. Um I don't know what's going to happen with Tony, the Sky Moore. I mean, these guys weren't in game playing time in the Super Bowl this past year. So, what's going to happen with that? Do we bring in how many? It depends how many receivers we bring in. This all this lots, lots still around, probably lots still around. So then we got we, we bring in um, a, a rookie receiver, and a lot of people think JD said we're going to still going to draft a receiver, whether it's round one, round two. With Hollywood Brown coming in, it's a one year deal as of right now. Does that change? what you think we're going to do as far as what receiver we're going to get. Cause I mean, how many like over, like there's not many guys like this in this draft, a lot of bigger type of receivers. It's a really big receiver, heavy draft. Xavier Woods is the only other guy that can say, Oh, that's the Hollywood Brown guy. I don't think we're going to get Hollywood uh, Xavier worthy anymore with, with Hollywood Brown here. Depends what we really think. Uh, we talked about this earlier too on, on, on Bleacher Report. It really depends on, I don't think a one year deal is going to change future plans if they really like worthy they'll go after him i think still i'm personally not the biggest fan of his because i even said it earlier i one of the main reasons i wanted brown is because i wanted a proven deep threat i wanted a guy i know who can catch deep balls on a consistent basis not a guy i'm hoping can i know brown's not top of the top of the top elite but he's really good at stretching the field and i want really good i don't want a chance so I'd rather not take a chance on that and hope it hits. I'd rather go for other receivers that I feel like their skill sets or will be easily transferred over in, in this year. Um, so I don't think it'll stop us. I mean, maybe not. Like I said earlier, too, I wish I hope we could just plug enough holes to the point where we can go BPA. If they feel like the best receiver out there is the guy they want, then I mean, I take it. I, again, I, I'd like. 
think a great mix with these guys would be I need still go Keon Coleman and I still go Lab McConkey. I'm still down for either one of those guys. Um I would you be shocked if we still sign another receiver? You Not really. Said, I mean, you said we have nobody, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're just in Josh Reynolds, and I, I don't think he's going to break the bank at all. So that could be a one-year, three million kind of guy. And I, I love, I love to have Josh Reynolds in that receiver room. Yeah, I mean, we we have a lot. We do have other needs. Um, we still have other holes in the roster, not huge ones. Um, well, it looks like we took care of the defensive tackle hole today with right right, right before this signing, you know, bringing back all of our guys, running it back with our D- DT room. But also, one year, we have so many guys, pretty much on one-year deals. If you think about it, if you go to our O line, you got the right tackle who's got to get out of his contract after next season. Our left guards making a crazy amount of money. I guess not compared to some of the other guard contracts that just came out recently, though. Um, we don't yeah. have a left. We don't have a left tackle. Uh, center free agent after next season. Right guard free agent after next season. Um, really, the only guys we got locked up beyond next season on the one our D line and O line are Jones and Karloftis and and FAU. Everyone else is pretty much could be gone in the next two. Now we might not be on our roster in two years. That's crazy. So we can go a number of positions um, in the in the in the early parts of the draft. Uh, that's why it's so surprising to see them not pull the trigger on a sneak trade because that the, the winds in the air are saying that he might stick around for another year. That's pretty crazy to me since you know, all, the, all the holes we have. Um, but yeah, I mean. We, we can do anything. I'm not surprised by anything we do in the uh, in the draft. And depending on whose guys' numbers, would you would you be shocked if what if Mike Williams still came? Depends if the money's right. I, I was reading something earlier that apparently the Chargers are going to try to bring him back, and he wants to come back to San Diego or L.A. So, well, they got rid of the Keenan Allen money, so they do have money. They for have him. money now, so they could they could bring him back in, a, in an entirely different deal. And he can maybe he signs a one year prove it deal over there because he's going to get a lot of targets in that offense now. So yeah, yeah. it's coming, it's coming yeah. his way. So yeah, I, that, that's true. They could always do that. He's comfortable there. Um, more realistically, though, I, I think we're probably if we do go another receiver, we probably got Josh Reynolds type of guy, DJ Chark kind of guy, like that 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 mold of guy, just a, a solid professional wide receiver, like that kind of guy. I mean, Hollywood Brown. I mean, but it's not like. I was never expecting to get Brown and other name because I was expecting Brown to come out with a three year, like 45 to $48 million contract. That didn't happen. Yeah. His yeah. contract's pretty low. It's good. Base seven million. So would it be that crazy to come away with Mike at eight, nine million base, 12, 13 million with incentives? It still wouldn't be breaking the bank. I mean, I that's, know, pretty, that's those two guys still cost less than Calvin Ridley cost per year. That's that's crazy. Yeah, it, it depends. I mean, it, it's really going to come down to what we do as far as the, um, I don't know, it, what, 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 how we fill in the other needs and stuff that we have. You know, off the tackle, maybe bring another veteran guy to, to go there. Yeah, that would be the other big position we could sign before. Yeah. That, that's pretty much it. At this point, it's another receiver and tackle. And his base is $7 million. Before this, we had 20, 24 million, 25 million, I think. Okay. Well, no, we didn't count Ward or Naughty. So that's another like 3 million off. Yeah. Yeah. We had like 20, we had like 21, 22 million um, minus seven. We still have like 14, 15 right now. So yeah. that's not, I mean, you could still do some damage of that. I love everyone's dogging the – let's go back to the Hollywood Brown. I love everyone's dogging him this whole week. Like, when we first put out there that Hollywood Brown, like, and he liked the tweet, and then we're like, oh, shit, like, Hollywood Brown liked the tweet of get the deal done. Everyone's, like, dogging him, saying, oh, he, you know, he's always hurt. Look at that. His worst year was 12 games played. So, 2019, 14 games played. 2020, 16 games played. 2021, 16 games played. 2022, 12 games played. 2023, 14 games played. Like this guy, I mean, he's a small guy, but he doesn't miss a lot of time. So it's like this weird false narrative. Yeah, he play. I have in fantasy. The guy plays questionable a lot. He's got the questionable tag a lot, but like, I mean, who doesn't anymore? Everyone's got a Q tag up until uh, game day. Um, and then I'm seeing a stat here. And again, love everybody in the chat. I'm seeing we have about, about 100 people in, in the um, in the in the watching the video right now. Loving the chat comments. Keep it coming. Seth Owen brings up another another one here, which is a nugget I saw earlier. The deep 
he's one of the best uh, deep threats in the league. Let's you know say that. Obviously, that's an obvious thing. But like, there's more to his game than that. Like I said, you can put him in jet sweeps. You get a quick screens. You can do so much with him, and that's something that I hope Andy exploits his Lincoln Riley Oklahoma days, and we freaking bring that out because you had a boring Greg Roman Ravens offense, and then whatever the heck Arizona was even running this past year, and then whatever you know when he had uh, Colt McCoy throwing the ball last the, the, the last year of Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, it was a very limited offense for him. So, like, let's let's be clear. He had limited situations. He never had Andy Reid. He never had Mahomes. He never had Travis Kelsey on his squad. So that's going to open up a lot of valves for him. But this is an interesting one, and this is something that a lot of people aren't talking about as much. And a lot of people who are anti-picking up Hollywood Brown were not, didn't want to bring this one up. But 3% drop rate last year, and he's got great hands. Seth Owen, uh, 3.6% over his career. And he's a special deep ball threat. So, like, this guy doesn't drop balls. And what were we, what was our problem? Big explosive plays and dropping passes. This guy checks off two boxes that we hadn't had before. So, I mean, like, I'm so excited, man. I, I think I think it's, I think I might have to get a Hollywood Brown jersey. I mean, I think yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Look, all the all the receivers that actually made it to free agency had major had, had question marks. Um, yeah. Ridley was the best receiver in free agency, and he had nine games of 40 yards or less. Nine. Hollywood Brown had less than that. I think Hollywood Brown had six. So guys had questions. They all have question marks because people don't let elite, elite, top-of-the-line receivers go. They don't let them even test the market. Um, so I, I don't understand, like, they all have question marks. I, I mean, that's dumb at this point to even say that. Uh, we – Luckily for us, we have so many other guys that do a lot of other things. So we don't need Brown to be something that he might never be, which is like an I'll do it all kind of receiver. Really, that seven million is going toward MBS routes. And he's getting paid like six million less than MBS. I know. <laughs> Think about that. Even with incentives, he won't even reach what MBS was averaging. What, what did he get 13 last year? Or he saved 13. I think he had 11 last year. Yeah, I mean, we ended up saving 12 and a half million. This saved 12 and a half million. million. Yeah. But at best, is if he has a great year, he'll he'll make what uh, MVS made. So think of it that way. Like, just forget about like what you could have. Think about what it replaced. We are a Super Bowl team already. We we retained the D-line. Probably going to lose Dana. Uh, we lost Gay. We haven't replaced those. But we had Tranquil step up, and he didn't even play full snaps anyway. So really, he's just taking a bigger role. Yeah. Um, so that's not really a loss. Uh, yeah, it is amazing. We uh, we upgraded from MVS while paying less to the guy. I think that's that's, a, that's hilarious. Yeah. So what what have we done so far from our team last year? This year we've upgraded so far. The only thing we we are question mark in is left tackle. That's it. Yeah, we still like go back to receiver things. I, I I missed. So we it's MVS is gone, Hardman's gone, and Richie James are gone. It's three guys who are gone. So we, we we've only filled in one of those spots. We have, we have two pretty much vacancies, I would say, at the receiver spot. But we're also bringing in Nico Ramizio will be there. Justin Ross will be able to kind of fill in. Uh, and then you have the Tony and Sky Morphs. Yeah. But we're talking about roles being replaced. We replace MVS with with so far. Yes, MVS with Hollywood Brown. Upgrade. I think I, I think he'll be more. I think it'd be more important than MVS as far as what he can do offensively, just based yeah. on his skill set. Instead of getting Trinkle splitting, Trinkle will get. He got paid to play a lot more. He'll be getting most, of the, not all those snaps now. Yeah. Um, Chanel will step up. So didn't really lose much there. Um, Edwards, we haven't re-signed at safety. That's a safety position that I'd like to have either him come back, which he very well could, because safety was one of the deepest positions in free agency this year. Yeah. Um, we have not uh, – running back's the other one. I'd like to see what we do at running back. That's another one we haven't really. So, really, we got left tackle, we got running back, and we got safety for the most part that need it. With Amenahu's injury, we also knew DN, rusher. But I personally think we're going to get like a tweener DT DN in the draft. Um, but so far, we've upgraded everything we've lost at this point. Yeah. Dude, I can't believe we got Hollywood Brown. <laughs> And it's so funny too. It's like people have different like uh, like perspectives on it. Cause I, I was playing basketball, like I said tonight, and there's a mixture. You have Chargers fans there. Some of the guys are Patriots fans. Um, then you have Commanders fans. And like I'm leaving there, I, I'm like the last one out of the gym. I was getting my stuff, and uh, everyone's already popped their cars. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, holy shit! I, I get a text from me. I'm like, holy shit! Hollywood Brown coming to Kansas City. Like, oh really? Like God, you guys got another one? 
like, I mean, dude, another one. I mean, we didn't really have much offensively this year besides Rice and Kelsey. So, like, I mean, the fact that people already think that about us and then, like, we're adding Hollywood Brown to that and a guy who, like, I don't know where he even gets this whole injury thing from anyway, but a guy who's just a, a, a burner, he can do it all, and I think Andy's going to use the shit, utilize the shit out of him this year. I'm telling you, man, I think Hollywood Brown's going to be a good fantasy guy this year. I th- obviously, I think he's going to be great for us. But I think with Andy recalling the plays, dude, I mean, this is – what wasn't he – wasn't he compared to Tyreek Hill coming out of the draft? What, wasn't that one – wasn't he one of the first guys to get that uh, the, the Tyreek Hill tag? Oh, the next – The next Tyreek Hill, wasn't he that? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm sure you can find a million articles on that. So, like, this is a guy who a lot of people thought was the next Tyreek Hill, and he's coming to Kansas City to play for a team that Tyreek Hill played for before. So, um, and Andy's going to have a field day with him, man. Um, let's see here. We got Donna Cochran, five foot nine, tall. What's his vertical? He's a body catch like MVS. Hope the team first mentality and winning culture will be part of his personality. Good teammate, hopefully. I mean, Donna, I mean, I don't, I don't really know much about him as a teammate. I've, I've never heard anything bad about him. I don't know where this label comes from. Maybe because his, his cousin's Antonio Brown. So people think like he's a bad guy. I've never heard anything bad about Hollywood Brown. Um, five foot nine. I mean, how tall is Tyreek Hill? Tyreek Hill is like five, seven. I mean, so like, I don't think really height really matters here. 3.6% uh, catch rate or drop rate. So like, mm, I don't think he's really much of a, if he's, if he's body catching, it's not really affecting him, his drops. So, um, his player come across the board. Every, I looked at four different websites for out of college, all Deshaun Jackson. I mean, that's, and, and you know what? Do everyone do some homework on Deshaun Jackson and look at the stats under Andy Reid. Okay. So, and look maybe. at his height. Sean Jackson was 5'10, and that's being generous. Yeah. And he went, and he's what, 5'9, 180. I mean, he's not like a skinny guy. I mean, 5'9, 180. Yeah. Sean Jackson was 5'10, 175. I mean, yeah. So. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't. I think. I think people just want to. Uh, yeah, five seven with Hill with cleats on. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand that. The, the now and, and I now that Hollywood's on our team, you're gonna see all people who are doubting Hollywood Brown. You're gonna see him coming around. I'm like, oh yeah, this guy's gonna be great with us. So it's like, good. I, I'm glad everyone's gonna be. Fine. All of Hollywood's not a perfect player. He he didn't get signed for a bazillion dollars for a reason. He's flawed. But we don't need him to be a world beater. We 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 we're, we're. But that's the thing. He can be though. Under the right tutelage, on the right court, sure. on the right system, you do more can be, which is why he's betting on himself with a one year deal. I like that confidence. Yeah, that's a guy we, were, we talked about this earlier. Who do you who would you really want those two guys on a one year deal? Because Mike Williams or Hollywood Brown on a one year deal, because they are the most talented players. That if they bet on themselves to do it all for one year, you want the most talent possible. That's yeah. what you want. The guys with the highest potential to reach. Those two guys are. And with a one-year deal, they're going to be hungry, man. They're going to be really hungry. And we're hungry. We saw Juju on his one-year deal. He upped his value so hard and went and got paid and went to New England. And for anyone worried about injuries, if Juju could stay healthy for a year with us on a one-year deal, anyone can do it. All right? Uh, yeah, exactly. And what happened when Juju went to New England? He was the play, play, play like half a season. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of fell apart there. Yeah. How old, how old was Juju when he came over to us? Because I because I, the him being because Hollywood Brown being twenty six, that's that's awesome, man. So Juju is twenty. Damn man, Juju's young. Yeah, I know. Why does he seem so old? I, I, I guess he's he hit the ground running out of college. Remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Juju's twenty seven right now. So man, that means we got Juju when he was twenty five, and then he left after one year, and then man, it's it's kind of wild. Dude, you get you, you draft I don't know, dead horse. I'm gonna say this a lot between now and, and April, but <laughs> you have Kelsey a part of the field. You have Hollywood running deep. You have Rice running crossers, and you have McConkey pull in the middle of the field. Dude, that is like that is a fun game of chess for Mahomes to be playing every single game. I, I that's man, that is. Showtime football at its finest, man. That's yeah. fun. No, it, it's gonna be so fun. Like, and that's the thing. I, I keep mentioning the fact that we're gonna be able to throw a vertical, we're gonna throw bombs again. Like the play action bomb is back. Like it was, and, and that's the thing. The last few years, like it hasn't really, we haven't really seen the big but we haven't seen it because we really haven't really have an MBS is supposed to be that, but it's never it's never it was never there. You guys yeah. need to go, everyone needs to go watch the, the Hollywood Brown highlights, man, because like Hollywood Brown, he beats 
the defense. Yes. So much. And even if he isn't that, the fear is there again. No one was scared of MVS doing that. That's someone to keep an eye on. We had too many guys at defenses were like, let him try shit. We're on yep. Kelsey. Kelsey and Rice. Kelsey and Rice. Stop them. Slow them down. We slow them down. You don't have that anymore. You have a bunch of guys that people need to keep an eye on. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to. And you're right. And you're right. Uh, uh, gamble. Worthy could be better than Hollywood. Could be, though. That's the problem, though. We don't know that. We know Hollywood's floor. We don't still. He's young enough to the point where we don't know his ceiling yet. Yeah. We, we, we know nothing about Xavier Worthy. All we know about Xavier Worthy is that he's competing with uh, guys like um, who's, who's who's the guy who has the fastest 40 all time? The one we had, Corey Coleman. Not Corey Coleman. Was, Ross. Um, yeah, John Ross. He's. As far as we know about Xavier Worthy, he's John Ross as of right now. Guy who freaking bl- tore it up at the combine. We don't know anything about the guy. Yeah. So, I mean, can't really can't, it's can't potential. It's potential. Yeah. He's not, you, you, you don't bet you don't bet on potential when you're going for three peats. Yeah. We need we, we need a floor at this point, at least. Yeah. Uh, we know what Hollywood can do. We think he can do more. We yeah. don't know what Worthy can do. We hope he could do. We see. We would hope for Worthy to even have Hollywood's floor. You yeah. don't. I, I. I would just rather now. I, I don't want that. I, I don't want that. Yeah, I don't That's want McConkie. McConkie is an NFL ready, out of the gates football player. Yeah, you know you're going to get a McConkie the second he plays. Uh, th- that's why, like, we're we're so ready to win now. We need instant performers, man. Okay, uh, she's saying, what's up, Marcus? It's Matt Vanway. Hey, Matty, what's up, buddy? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I get, I get the wanting a young buck. I totally understand it. Totally understand that with Sergeant Gamble. I totally, I totally get it. But like, we don't, we don't know him to take his point. We don't really know much about him. Yeah, he tested well the combine. He looked solid in college. But like, not only did Hollywood look solid in college. He's proven it, and he proved it on. And I'm going to come back to it. He proved it on a a, a an offense that, that lacked creativity. That's hence why Roman's not in Baltimore anymore. Hence why Baltimore went in a whole new direction this past year. And what happened? They they got they they got an MVP out of it. And Lamar Jackson's probably, probably his best, best throwing seasons ever. They went in a whole different direction. And even with that, he still had 91 catches at a thousand yards in that offense that lacked creativity and they were not fun at all. I mean, like. This team, we looked at Hollywood Brown for a reason back 2019 when he came out for the draft, and there's a reason why Andy Reid was the one going at him, just like he went after Juju a couple years back. Andy Reid's got he's got things cooking right now, man. He's the mind. If if, I, if my mind's racing, we're all racing about having to see the the vertical passing game again. Can you imagine oh, what Andy Reid doing right now in his basement? Well, Andy Reid's tweeting about di- or uh, texting about diamonds for crying for Christ's sake. You know, I know. I mean. And he changed it up too. You can just do uh, uh, what did he say last year to uh, him? Rings, think rings. To uh, tranquil. Uh, yeah, I forget. But think, think Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, love Lad McConkey. I only thing I don't like about Worthy is he likes 165 pounds. Yeah, he's young. I mean, that's the thing. Like Worthy's got he, he has to build into the NFL body. It's not going to happen overnight. He's got to build into it. Kind of like B.J. Thompson, our, our edge rusher, basketball player, track star. He's not going to be that guy overnight. It's why he was so late in the draft. He's going to have to build it up. He's got to, he's got to kind of, you know, build an NFL body where he's going to have to do that first round pick for a guy like that. I don't know. There's many examples as to why we don't want to do that right off the gate. Um, so they got love lad McConkey chiefs fan. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big McConkey fan. Um, okay. And do I have uh Brown stats? I'm curious to know his reception numbers with Lamar. So yeah, I have it right over here. So first year is rookie season. He had 46 catches on 71 targets. Uh, 584 yards, seven touchdowns, and his rookie season's a 46. Um, 2020, 20, second year, 58 uh, catches on 100 targets. Uh, he played uh, all 16 games that year, has 700 yards, six, 769, eight touchdowns. Uh, 2021, his last year with Lamar, he had 91 catches. So 91 catches, and that's the year he had 1,000 yards and uh, six touchdowns. So, I mean, yeah. And then – yeah, he played pretty much. He played every game with Lamar besides two games. His rookie season, he missed two games, and he, he played play all but two games with with Lamar. Um, and then with uh, well, Arizona, wasn't Brown complaining about uh, Lamar's ball back then or something? Was he? I, I think there was some kind of thing about him like not getting the ball. Like, and I, I think he 
And, you know, to be fair, Lamar was getting knocked a lot for his lack of deep, like just deep ball period at the time. So was not, um, test, not testing it. Yeah. Just not as confident. He's a different thrower now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to, well, yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to take the race car out <laughs> plenty. Yeah. I mean, it won't, you won't have that uh, problem with, uh, with Patty. Pat, dude. Pat, forget about how excited Andy Reid is, how excited we are. Can you imagine how, how excited Pat is? Because a lot of people were saying last year, oh, he doesn't have a deep ball. He doesn't have a deep ball anymore. Like, look, look a lot of his deep balls are like, are like one hops and stuff. Yeah, because he hasn't had a chance to throw it in for so long. Now he can actually show the, the league that he still has it. Man, it's going to be so fun next year, man. Ah, that's why, yeah, now. that's why I want McConkie so bad, dude, because whether Kelsey McConkie, Rice, or Hollywood Brown, two of those guys are getting single covered by guys that will not be able to cover them single coverage. Nope. Will just won't, will not happen. And, and, and you'll be able to pick his spots, go deep, intermediate, short, line of scrimmage, quick screens. Um, I, I just think like they're just trying to they're just trying to build just something impossible to game plan. Yeah. They said, I mean, and, and you could say the whole off the whole year when I thought we weren't going to win the Super Bowl this year. At some point, I was like, hey, okay. regardless, and, and and even though we won it, we. We're done. The season's over, and I say we're going to overhaul the off the receiver room. That's happening. We, we didn't take it long. Right away, we cut MBS, say get twelve million bucks. I mean, Hartman's gone. Richie James is gone. We're probably going to go and get a receiver right away. And like we saw the frustration in Mahomes' face. And we, had, we simplified it. We had to simplify the whole thing. We saw frustration in Mahomes' face after Tony, you know, batting balls up in the air, getting picked off, pick sixes, and. I think the Mahomes doing what he did the other day to save all that money. Yes, it helps us in the long run. I think it was for stuff like this. It was for getting Hollywood Brown. It was for being able to get other receivers in the in the house. And I think we might we might end up getting another guy. I, I would not be surprised at all if it is another guy. I don't think it's gonna be Mike Williams, but if it is another guy, say like a Josh Reynolds, that's huge, man. I mean, I, that, even that is huge because like because yeah. we, we didn't have a Josh Reynolds this year. No, think about it. We did. We went for MBS to like Rice. And now that was pretty much it. It was a, re- a recycling of guys. I know Justin Watson stepped up when he needed to, but like I think we asked a lot out of Justin Watson this year because I don't think that Justin Watson shouldn't be getting as many targets as he did get. That was more desperation than anything else. Oh yeah, yeah. We because we had yeah, and he, and he made some clutch cl- catches here. I'm not, not going to knock Justin Watson. I mean, he definitely has a role on this team, but the guy, a guy like that for most other NFL teams was what would not be getting as many targets as he did in Kansas City. I mean, just based on the it was a situation that it was last year. Isn't it crazy how much changes in like a year? A year ago, when we were talking about receivers, you couldn't keep the words Tony or Sky Moore out of our mouths. But I know now we, we don't even want to say it. We, we've said them, we said their names once, and that was because that was just to highlight the uncertainty in the room. But like, isn't that crazy? I mean, we didn't even mention them when talking about our depth because. They will. I mean, you know, uh, Sky Moore will be with us. I don't think he's going to be going anywhere yet. But um, um, yeah, I, I'm getting a question here from our guy uh, Noah John Marshall. Who is this removed from the wide receiver uh, depth chart? I'm going to pull up our depth chart. So when we did JD and I did our Monday show, a couple our first Monday show uh, highlighting the receivers that we had on the uh, and all the cap room that we have. Um, that was before we cut MVS too. So I'm going to go to that. It's going to have some MVS's name on there because it was before we cut him. Uh, but I'm going to put that up here right now. Um, hold on a second. Sorry about that. Let me go to that. Who Brown Rice. I like that one, G Pick. That's a good one. Chef Mahomes serving Brown Rice. Oh, that is nice. I like that. It's got a t shirt written all over it. It does, actually. All right. Let's see here. We're going to do this. Uh, Going back a little bit, guys. Uh, so, okay. So these are the receivers we have on our roster as of right now. This is not as right now, as of before we cut MVS. So, no, John Marshall is asking a question here. Um, the question was, who does this remove from the current wide receiver depth chart? I don't know who removes, but we're going to have some. I mean, I, I mean, some of these guys won't be on the team when it comes to uh, September. So, MVS is gone, obviously. KT. Uh, Sky, I don't think we're cutting them, but I mean, if we do bring in other guys, I mean, I could see that. Um, they adjusted Waz at 2.1 million. Uh, Rasheed Rice not going anywhere. Anthony Miller, the guy we signed from uh Chicago this past year 
And then we have just a, a bunch of other guys, Remigio, Justin Ross, um, Miller, Smith, and Copeland were guys who were like future deal type guys. So Miller Smith. Miller Smith. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> So realistically, we have KT, we have Watson, Skies, it's three, Rice, four, Anthony Miller could be cut, um, Ross, five. So realistically, we have five, then Hollywood Brown. That's six guys right there. That's six guys that we know. We kept, we kept seven receivers last year going into uh, week one of the season. So that's six guys right there. Um, Remigio is going to take over that, that return role. He was one of the best returners coming out of college last year. Um, if he stays healthy, he takes over the, the uh, Richie James role. So we got five locks. Yeah, I would say the Rice, KT, Sky. Isn't it crazy? KT was being touted to- to- as the number one receiver. Now he's like number five or six. It's Probably by the, time we- by the time we draft someone, he'll be five or six. So Hollywood, Rice, KT, Sky, Watson's that's five. Then Ross, six. Yeah. Uh- I mean, some, some. I, I think it might, it might, maybe surprise. I don't think it will be to many people. But once we get to the the, the brass tacks and things, we when we get into training camp, there is a plot. It's plausible to say that KT will not be on this team. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Like, would I mean, you? Do, and I, the question I'm gonna throw everybody in the chat: Would you guys be shocked if KT's not on our team after training camp? I don't. I don't think so. Sky, I would be surprised if he if he was cut just because he's just, you know second round pick. I mean, with nah, the- Sky. I don't think I think Sky's gonna be with us. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think Remigio could be could be a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Are you are you not a Remigio guy? You didn't really you didn't really react when I said Nico Remigio could be the uh, a big thing. Well, a big thing being our return guy. A return man. Yeah, yeah. He could take, take it over the Richie, Richie James rule, so we don't have to pick up a guy to do that. Yeah. 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 Ross, uh, you know, Nikki, I see that. Let's let's hold off on and say Ross will be gone. Uh, you know, I, I think you know, because who we brought in, it's not a it's not a Ross replacement by any means. Hollywood's not taking what Ross is gonna do for us. So like I think you may see some more Ross action um and see what he can do in this uh, uh this coming year. But yeah, I mean again, very plausible he may not be on the team, but I still hold out hope for the guy. Uh, his stories, you know, one of those storybook stories, you know. Yeah, Smith Marset got a, a they yeah, they get resigned. I think he got resigned by Carolina. Yeah, at least so, yeah. You go for him. Um, but yeah, uh, I think Hollywood comes in and right away makes our receiver room with uh with him and Rice and that starting uh that starting lineup, man. That's so fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, Ross still got time. He's yeah. It's still got time. Damn right he does. Chiefs fan, I'm with you, buddy. I am with you 100%. Ross, there's too many people who want to shit on Ross. And, like, sure, I, yeah, he had a lot of hype last year. Didn't really do much. Still, though, I'm, there's, 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 there's a chance that he could be a, he could be something, a, a rotational guy on this team. But we'll see. But if we do sign someone, then sure, he's gone. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing. That's where my hesitation comes in, Mike. Cutting KT doesn't save any um, – doesn't save any. No, that's the unfortunate part. That's why he's probably. I mean, but hey, KT as your number five or six, it's not bad. I will say. Yeah. Yeah. Why has Ross not seen Lux? I, I don't know, man. That was the that was the when he got the whole in trouble last year with the with the whatever with, with I don't know with the misdemeanor or whatever he he got. Um, that's where things because I think he was. I think it was the Minnesota game where it was, it was that one game where he had like that, the, the, they would throw him a bomb into the end zone and like he got like stopped by the, the cornerback where he had off to PI. That the next day is when he had the, uh, the where, where the charges were brought up on him. Nothing happened, obviously, but like I, th- I think that was a, that played a big part because he might have had a growing role at that point. I don't know. I'm just maybe just spitballing here, but yeah, I don't know why he didn't get much playing time. Um, I don't know. I do not know. Uh, yeah, you use KT as a running back. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, hey, I will say if, if we do it with, with, with KT and Hollywood Brown, it's two guys who are quick as crap, man, together. Because I'm fun with I mean, Maybe fun. not running back, but most of his touches, if not all of them, will come around or behind the line of scrimmage. That's for damn sure. Yeah. 
Can't believe Veach can't get a set seventh round just to get him off the books. You know what? That that's where it could happen. You could see him move off during the draft, like late, late, later on, later on in the draft. Someone throws a seventh round pick to him and get some kind of pick for him. Problem yeah. is, if it's like, man, if Andy Reid couldn't get something out of this guy, what other offensive coordinator or coach can be like? I can. I mean, I will say with this industry, you have a lot of arrogant guys who think they can do that. I mean, what McVay? McVay is one of the guys that could be like, you know, let me take a shot with this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. The bottom line is we're going we're gonna to end the show here soon, guys. But um, everyone, it's amazing you guys were uh, involved and uh, ready to uh, rock on this live stream tonight. Uh, I wasn't expecting doing this. I didn't expect a, a move to be made tonight. I knew in the next few days, but I didn't expect on a Thursday night this was going to happen. Um, but, yeah, my last thoughts is if you're a fantasy guy, you're a fantasy woman, Get in and get Hollywood Brown. If you're in a keeper league, dynasty league, try to get Hollywood Brown tonight from someone. Because I think Hollywood Brown is going to dominate this year. And I think our offense is going to actually look fun to watch again as far as, you know, being a, a, a kind of explosive that throw the bomb uh, stuff right, right, right out the gate. I'm talking like first play, uh, we get the ball, play action, bomb, 83 yards to, to Hollywood Brown kind of kind of game again. Um, so I'm excited. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really excited that we got, that we got the guy that um, – who liked our post that kind of jumpstarted this whole Hollywood Brown and Kansas City stuff this week. So uh, it's nice that we have the scoop. With, that Chief Concerns was able to scoop this whole uh, Hollywood Brown stuff. So I'm ex- really happy about that. Uh, Tejo, any last thoughts before we get out of here? Um, I just keep looking forward to uh, – I still look forward to some other big signings from us because that wasn't that didn't break the bank by any means. So – we did our cup uh, and we could trade scene at any moment. Who knows about that? I don't, I don't, I don't believe like anything. They really be getting smoke screen, screens at this point. So um, I still look forward to hopefully um, offensive tackle being signed. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the, that, that'll be the next domino to fall. And, that, or run, uh, that or running back maybe. Yeah. And I love this whole thing. Um, we, we, we tweeted out this whole thing with um, Teja, you don't like Sean. I don't know. Sean, who's he talking about here? I don't know. HVHY, can you expand on that? Um, I do want to say uh, the, the one thing here. Um, God, I don't know where I was going with this. Um, we were talking about. Well, McVeigh. McVeigh. Oh, Sean McVeigh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but he's a guy who's, who's, you know, confident enough to think that he's one of the few people that can get something out of. KT, even though Andy Reid and Mahomes couldn't. Yeah, that, that's all. Nothing on dogging him. Um, he's a good coach. Uh, I just don't. I just think he could. He thinks he can still get something out of him. I hope he thinks that. <laughs> Please take him. They take him. Take him. Take him for seven. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be exciting all season, man. Uh, this is the first time to fall was finding a receiver, and I think right now. You, you can't be mad at what Brett Beach has done so far. Obviously, yes, we could say we tackle or something, but if they're, if they're serious about Wanya, then sure, I, I guess that's not a need for them. But I will say this. We kept Chris Jones around. We tagged Legereus Sneed, so he may either – and there's, there's rumors that he may stay. He's staying around for at least one more year, or we're going to get a pick for him. And then you get receiver. So right now, he's done the three things that everyone wanted him to do, and we're technically only 24 hours into the free agency, the, the legal sure. league. Yeah. So, He's done everything we want him to do so far, so you really can't complain. And he's kept her tranquil. So, like, everyone should be ecstatic about the job that uh, Brett Peach has done so far, and I'm looking forward to see what happens as ne- that over the next few days because Hollywood Brown didn't break the bank, so there's lots of other things we can spend on. So I'm really happy about that. So, guys, it was awesome uh, coming on here on live stream with you guys tonight. We love you all. Uh, JD loves you all. Tasia loves you all. And uh, it, was, um, it was nice coming on here. Impromptu. Um, and I, yeah, the one thing I wanted to say this, yeah, after we we tweeted out the whole Hollywood Brown thing, I think uh, the Athletics Nate Taylor tweeted, "Oh yeah, start watching film on Curtis Samuel and um, who was the other guy and Darnell Mooney." Darnell Mooney. And I was like, ah, I don't, I just don't think so. And the Hollywood Brown thing, he liked our post, and I'm like, no, there's there's, there's more to it than that. Then he goes on Twitch the, the next day watching Mahomes film and like acting like it was you know, all nonchalant about it, and then we're hearing things about Curtis Samuel. Um and uh, Darnell Mooney, those two guys gone, and Hollywood Brown, man, he stuck with it. And, I, and honestly, between the three, I know JD was a huge Curtis Samuel fan. I'm ha- I would rather have Hollywood Brown over all those guys. And he got paid cheaper than all of them, 
And I think he has the, uh, the high ceiling, and he's also shown the most of all three of those guys. He's actually shown, like, statistically, he's shown more than all those guys, and he has the higher ceiling than all those guys, too. So really happy about this. Brett Veach, A-plus so far. Um, I had a B-plus earlier because I said – I said, actually, remember my thing? I said, uh, B-plus, I would love for him to get a receiver, Hollywood Brown. He gets it. So as I said earlier, B-plus until he gets a receiver, Hollywood Brown, and he did get it. So it's got to be A-plus for me. So Brett Veach, thank you. Kansas City loves you, and yeah, good. I hope everyone, you know, watch some Hollywood Brown Oklahoma highlights tonight because we're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff um, this year with Andy, and watch some uh, Deshaun Jackson highlights to get a little taste of what uh, what Andy can do for uh, for a receiver like that. So, so I'll leave you with that. All right, guys, some homework for you guys for our, our next show on on Monday. Yeah. So, all right, guys, well, enjoy your night, enjoy the highlights of Hollywood Brown, and uh, we'll see you guys Monday. We'll uh, be posting clips tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you guys Monday. Unless a breaking news story happens over this weekend. so Don't speak in, too soon. Keep that in mind, too. We get Tyron Smith uh, or uh, Humphreys by uh, by Saturday, and we'll be back on. Uh, yeah. Uh, damn, damn right. But, um, all right, guys, everyone, enjoy your night, and enjoy the conference championships, and we'll see you guys hopefully um, maybe hopefully, yeah, hopefully Monday. Hopefully there's no breaking news this weekend. But hopefully. Love you guys. I don't know. Love you. We got, we got Hollywood Brown, so we're, we're good. <laughs> all right, take it easy, everybody. Later. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your